So this is our last morning ever on Ruby Roos. We looked at each other last night and we were like, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, we're homeless. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of an overwhelming feeling. Feeling very um, unmoored, I think. Morning all. Theresa asked me how I slept. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I must have been asleep within 10 seconds of hitting the pillow. Long old day, I can attest to that. Long old day, and 16 more miles than we're in Lymington, so actually a pretty peaceful anchorage on the night. Look at that. Oh. What a beautiful, beautiful morning, and what a stunningly beautiful anchorage. So lovely, you couldn't see anything last night, apart from just like those white cliffs over there. Didn't even realize how many boats there were here. So yesterday we, um, we did 108 miles in the end. We averaged uh, 5.9 knots. Top speed was 7.8. Pretty good, obviously a lot of time with us at that point. And uh, yeah, the crossing was pretty good, actually. It was long, but it was really good, apart from those couple of hours on the Alderney race, which were like <laughs> torturous and frustrating because we, we got there, obviously, you know, before, no, sorry, after we, we had planned to. So that was frust a very frustrating element. Today, we are off to Lymington, and that is where the boat is going to, to be until the new owner takes over. I'm happy, I'm content. I'm really looking forward to getting to Lymington and just like, I don't know, in a way, I'm kind of looking. You done? Are we up? Yeah, in a, in a way, I'm kind of looking forward to like this chapter being complete, you know? I've not been really been dreading it and I don't know if that's normal or not, but I've, I've kind of just been looking forward to, to getting on with it. But that being said, I'm not a particularly sentimental person. <laughs> I like change and I like the fact that things are going to change soon. So, yeah, I'm excited. that out but it is a real head I find it very strange it's kind of a little bit like sailing in the past and it feels like that because it, we're sailing we haven't sailed in a northern European autumn for years and the whole kind of temperature light the sea you know the, everything is so familiar from days gone by before we kind of left for a warmer climb so you know sailing in September is what I used to do when I was club racing and you know being out wrapped up like to the nines in the same bloody families as well i've had these families for 15 years mm -hmm. um it all just feels a little bit nostalgic very nostalgic actually so yeah it's there's that there's the kind of strange nostalgia from coming back somewhere we were, i was just saying off camera that we've been gone for five and a half years the last time we sailed these waters, it was May 2015. And now we've come back after five years and five years, that really freaks me out. It's gone, it's gone past in a, in a blink, hasn't it? Yeah. Like an absolute blink of an eye. And honestly, if I was, I know we have a few, one or two people that watch these videos. Uh, it does go past faster than any other time in your life. So, you know, go while you can, and I think is a message I would have to put across to anyone because it just, it zipped past. And so there's that, there's the fact that, you know, more than likely this is the last sail we'll do on this boat. Uh, and she has been an absolutely wonderful, wonderful boat. Like part, part of our family, I suppose, in a way, there's been a lot of people going, oh, you're soft, you know, it's just, it's just a boat. It's not, this is, it, 
Yeah, it's more than that. You know what? She's kept us safe across oceans. She's been a very comfortable home. Mm. And so, you know, in about an hour's time, I'm going to say to you, you know, lions and fenders. And that was the last time I said that to you on this boat. It reminds me of the time that we moved on to this boat from our house. It was all just a bit overwhelming. And I think that I'm not going to be able to process this this time until it's done. It's coming into Livington Marina. It's a very big ferry coming our way. You okay with this, Nick? Oh, we're here, we made it. That's, uh, I think the last time we're ever gonna sail Ruby Roos, which is um, a very weird feeling. Good morning. Day one of clearing the boat out. And um, I'm probably wearing the most outrageous outfit that I've worn in a while. And I've got uh, a Ruby Rose designer t-shirt on, which is, uh, it's got the armpits hanging out of it because it's so old. I'm wearing uh, a life jacket and I'm wearing a pair of Cookie Monster pajama bottoms. Yeah, I'm going to fire the life jacket. Ready? Yep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Didn't fire. Which is why you should always check these things. Mm -hmm. So it should fire now. <laughs> okay, well, it inflated, but... Not throwing. Before you go offshore, you need to check how much these are screwed in. They do work the way loose over time. Okay. All right, my turn. The last one didn't fire properly. I don't even know how to do it. This is well, terrible. Yeah, the firing. Um, okay. See, this is obvious. Now this is, I think, just as a point, right? So we're gonna start a clock, right? I know where the firing handle is. Now, if you've got a guest on board that you haven't introduced to a life jacket. Or just me. Or you, who's been on this boat for eight years. And we've had those life jackets for six. This is terrible. Right, we'll look for it. We'll start the clock now. No, you, so you need to pull that out, that's just where the handle is. There oh, you I go. See. Right? And then I just pull it like that? Yep. Ready? Go. That's really cold. What? Is that okay? That's not deployed properly. Is it not? No. So this, first problem, this wasn't screwed in properly. Well, that's yeah. our fault, probably. That's our problem. Yeah, but so it's kind of, from the point of view of what you're doing with a life jacket, you should always check to see that your cartridge is screwed in because they do work themselves loose. So your light doesn't work. Now the light, the light doesn't work because there was an issue with older spin locks, whereas this contact would get moisture on it, mm. or the life jacket would get moisture on it, and mm. it would just come on, so the battery would be flat. So we knew about this when we had torches. I just want this a little, I want more air in this, or more carbon dioxide in this. It's a bit flat, but it then again, it's, prob flat. it's probably enough right. to keep you afloat. Yes, okay, okay, let's have another look. Um, all right, we'll try and put your spray hood on then. <laughs> to me, I would want to make sure that you need to check, before you go offshore, they have to be checked. Check far better than we've checked them. Yeah. And we've got new life jackets and these have been in the locker for a year. So yeah, yeah. it's not like we've just sat there and go, we did, we're just throwing them out today. So, so we want to go to the rest of these things. So that's your whistle. So get the whistle off. Go on and whistle away. <whistles> that works. <whistles> all right, we're now trying. not very loud. <whistles> that's not loud at all. I can shout louder than that. All right, well, okay, we'll now try the manual inflation tube. Oh, that works. That's better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you can inflate it manually. Yeah. All right, well, let's have a look at this. Hey, look, this one's fully deployed. Yeah. So with the zips done and the zips broke open, so that's pretty cool. Mm. The, that, the manual inflation works. Yeah. I think once I deployed it, it was okay. I was a bit concerned that I didn't know how to manually deploy it. And this, I thought this was fogging, but it's not fogging. It's actually degradation of the plastic spray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, 
That's gonna be pretty. I mean, that looks. Isn't I wouldn't be able to see anything. Like if I was in um, like bad conditions, you yeah. basically would be blind. Essentially. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, what's that off? And then that's, uh, we'll put those in the bin. We are packing up the boat for the last time and trying to do it in an organized fashion which i think for us is actually uh, quite a novelty so we've got some tough crates we're gonna split those tough crates into different bits so we've got one tough crate down there for books and manuals and the charts we're gonna need we've got another one for knickknacks so this is wet weather gear and wet weather bags and stuff yeah mm -hmm. and life jackets so yeah, it's strange just stripping the, stripping the girl down. I um, She looks a little bit bare. Ultimately, it's uh, what needs to be done. It's just very odd that it's our home. Look at all that art stuff that we've actually never used. Well, Nick's head first in, uh, in a locker again. But normally when Nick's head first in a locker, the things that he like brings out go back in. But today, all the stuff is, ah. Oh, my old passport. Oh. oh my god, look how young I look. Have a look. <laughs> That's the one where you look like a terrorist. It is actually. <laughs> so I was in 20 in that photo. 14 years later. Well, there's my military service exemption. <laughs> wow, you can still carry that around? How paranoid are you? <laughs> my mother's like, make sure you carry your military service exemption. Do you want to explain to everyone what that means? Yeah, I'm an Italian citizen, by, and so, yeah, I was meant to go in the army and ran away. Was it, was it mandatory? Yeah, yeah, it was mandatory. That's what I mean, I was about 30 when that stopped. So from 18 to 30, I had to like, carry that carry that exemption. But that was like, I don't really give away how old you are, but that was some years ago now. <laughs> in 1926. <laughs> you really don't need to carry it around anymore, Nick. Well, no, it's a bit, well, in all fairness, we've had this boat for eight years, Teresa. I know, I know, but you were 30 quite a bit before eight years ago. <laughs> no, I'm not sure how that made it onto the boat and at what point you ever thought that you would need to show that to someone. What's we got here? What's this? Nikki Fabry, Ruby Rose. Oh yes. We won a, um, a race, didn't we? Won this? Yeah, yes, believe it or not. So where do we get these from? In the pool. Oh wow. These? Well, we've had them forever. When did you buy these? My mother bought them in Norway for me. Well, there you go. My mother gave me this when I was at uh, medical school. Are you trying to tell me that we're taking a candle snuffer <laughs> like 30,000 miles? You know how much I love Christmas. And never once used it. <laughs> we have two Christmas trees. <laughs> <laughs> I like both Christmas trees, but this Christmas tree can't take the baubles. Oh my God. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> wow. But a lot of this stuff, honestly, we should have cleared out a lot of years ago, to be honest. It's just being uh, either thrown away, given away, recycled, or put into storage for us to take to Ruby Rose too. So, yeah, it's kind of crazy. I will just spend the next three or four days cleaning this place and getting it straight. So that's uh, that's the plan so onward and forward sitting in amongst a big pile of rubbish uh, bags you know what i actually quite enjoy it i know you do i love cleaning i know so yeah it's the final clean out of uh, ruby rose so i'm literally going through and cleaning the bottoms of every locker so yeah i'm doing that just cleaning the cupboards out making sure that everything is spotless beneath the surface as above it we're a few days into the cleaning, sorting, clearing out operation of Ruby Rose and um, you know when you're kind of in a big clear out and be a big kind of cleaning operation and things have to get a lot messier before they get kind of cleaner and all more organized I feel like that's the stage that we're in now that the boat I feel like it looks really messy we've got lockers open we've got the cockpit full of stuff Things are not in the place where they live. Uh, they're kind of strewn all over the boat. Um, the fore cabin is full of Tupperware containers and boxes and just just stuff. Um, but there is some kind of uh, kind of order to the chaos. Um, we're slowly clearing everything out that we 
don't want to keep, that we don't need anymore and separating it from the things that we are going to leave on the boat um, and of course separating it from the things that we're going to keep for ourselves and um, hopefully uh, move on to Ruby Rose too when the time comes so I, I don't like living in this kind of environment it, it feels really kind of I don't know I get really weirdly like on edge when things are um, I don't think untidy is the right word but like just generally disrupted uh, I don't I, I'm not the tidiest person actually but I don't like when things that are just strewn all over the place um, and yeah I feel really on edge so and I know Nick feels the same so we, at the end of every day we have to put things kind of slightly right but uh, yeah in the meantime during the day things uh, the boat kind of looks like a bit of a tip however we are making progress I don't know it's a strange time we're both quite tired you can really tell by my my demeanor that I'm, I'm a little bit wiped out at the moment and Nick Nick's been pretty stressed um, He's been sleeping okay, but he's he's anxious about this whole thing. I think that he's focusing on the actual like logistics and getting the boat ready and and getting the boat surveyed and you know hopefully I know that he is worried about the survey and hoping that nothing comes up that he you know wasn't anticipating. There's a couple of issues that we know about, but obviously it is still a nervous moment. We want to. I guess we just want this chapter to be, I won't say over with, but we just want it to be kind of cleanly completed, I guess. We just want a smooth conclusion. Well, it's lift out day. And then the surveyor is coming at 7.30 tomorrow morning, bright and early. So we uh, have this afternoon while we're up on the hard to, um, I finish off all the kind of little jobs that need doing, um, which at this stage basically just involve cleaning everything, you know, one last time. And Nick will uh, get on with the jobs that he needs to do on the outside, on the hull. So I think he needs to change an anode, he wants to service a prop. So they're actually leaving us in the slings overnight. So they can just pop us back in the water in the morning. And the guy was like, you know, first thing tomorrow morning we'll put you back in and we're like well we're getting the boat surveyed first thing tomorrow morning and so yeah I think the pressure's on for the surveyor to get finished as soon as possible so that they can get the boat back in the water because obviously they need the lift the the yeah the lift oh it's out of our hands got nothing to do with us we want the survey to be done as soon as possible as well and locate those see and now it just doesn't move Back. Hello. Good morning. I guess this is our last day mm. on Ruby Rose. She had a survey yesterday. Um, surveyor's verbal report to be confirmed in writing today was that the boat was in tip-top condition I think the only thing he said that he wanted us to sort out there was some surface rust on the hydraulic ram so welcome to our last transmission from Ruby Rose <laughs> yeah it's been a kind of I was gonna say emotional but I think it's been I don't know it's been a mixed bag it's been manic so here we are, so this is the end. Thank you Ruby Rose, you've been a pretty amazing home for us for six years. So, I mean, how are you feeling about... Because during the week you were getting quite strung out. Yeah. Um, how are you feeling now that it's all reached a conclusion, or just about? I think it's very much like 
it, I think it's exactly the same set of emotions I had when we moved onto this boat. Yeah, I agree. It, it, everything is just so frantic. Yeah, and Nothing, it's all a bit of a blur. Yeah, I haven't had time to sit and process it. Yeah, and I and think I've, that's where I understand with it. I've, I've, I thought I would be much more emotional than I am, but I just feel like it's all. I just feel a bit numb about it all. Yeah, is that how you feel? Yeah, it's been. I don't. As I said, I don't think we've had time to sit and assess what we're doing. Yeah. So from that point of view. Um, yeah, I think it will, it will only hit us, you know, once this is all done and dusted. Yeah. And, you know, we are, all right, we're homeless for a year. Yeah, well, and that's 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 the next challenge to overcome. I, I know that in the comments you guys are all like, but what are you doing next? <laughs> are we at YouTube? <laughs> we don't know. We're, you're going to have to wait for us to figure that out before we can tell you guys. I think in pre-COVID times, this would all have been set down yes. pretty straightforward. Yes. However, you know, life has changed for, you know, 8 billion people at the moment, so our our plight is a very small one. Yeah. Um, so we have no plans, no immediate plans to do anything um, apart from try and work out which possessions we can leave in a storage unit, which possessions need to be carried with us. I just want to close this door completely, mm. not leave it ajar. <laughs> if I want a door based analogy. <laughs> anyway, that's us. So anyway, the end of our chapter on this boat. But to use another door analogy, as one door closes, another one opens. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching this, and uh, stay tuned for whatever we do next. When I'll be riding a yak through Mongolia wearing a tinfoil hat. <laughs> Goodbye. What will I be doing? Following on behind, playing a lute. I'll be your support team. <laughs> My support loot. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye.